to episode, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode uh, 100 and do your own research uh, of the Speared Sunday's podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, tickets to my Melbourne International Comedy Festival go on sale this Tuesday. Uh, I'm doing March uh, March uh, 24th until the 18th of April every night except for Mondays. That sounds like a lot of shows, but they are limited capacity. COVID safe shows, fuck all tickets to each individual show. So, the very first Saturday, that's the one that I want you guys to cop tickets to. That's the one that is going to sell out first. There are less than 50 seats to the first Saturday. If you want to come and see a fucking rocking show, I believe it's the 27th, book tickets to the, to the first Saturday. If I can sell out at least one of the shows, the first Friday and Saturday, if we can sell that out in like the first week or even the fucking first day that this shit goes on sale on Tuesday... That would be crazy. Tickets have gone crazy in pre-sale. Thank you very much. Um, I did just want to note that uh, refunds in the in the unlikely event, if that does happen, all 100% guaranteed. If there are cancellations, money back. Absolutely, we take and, – and we've got afterpay. And I finally fucking – what I'm most proud of is uh, after – Literally years since I started doing this shit in 2013, I fucking hated booking fees. And this year is the very first year of my whole career that I've managed to 100% eliminate them. No booking fee at all. Not for you, not for me. It's fucking great. We It took me ages to find the right service. We had to build all of this custom shit, but the tickets are like directly from me to you. Your money goes to me. There's no middlemen. There's no fucking ticket master charging you $6 and me $8, and then that's all hidden, and that drives the price up. It's 35 bucks from you to me. That's it. It's finally fucking how it should be, straight from you to the artist. It's amazing. It was very difficult to set up. It took me days, days, and days, weeks to fucking build, but we did it, and it's finally a fair ticketing system and I hope that I'll be able to use it for most of 80 to 90 percent of my shows going on throughout my career depending on whether a venue has uh contracts or not with ticketing services which sometimes they do which I think should be illegal but nothing I can do about that I'm stoked with that. I hope you guys are too. It's literally, I know you guys care a lot about that because I do. uh, And it's something that I've tried to achieve since 2013 or 14. And we finally fucking did it. Uh, I've been, uh, I've had having a great week, guys. Uh, Obviously the pre-sale happened and and that's gone crazy. Uh, I was real nervous about it because I was like, oh, fuck. How's it going to go after all this shit that's happened? But uh, Melbourne's really like stepped up. And after two years... Uh, or well after you know I haven't done the comedy festival for like four years I think uh, so I'm stoked to be coming back and Melbourne supporting me and that's that's amazing so get your tickets loosespears.com slash gigs uh, to grab yours please if you are not sure which one to go to check out grab tickets to the first Saturday or the first Friday I want to fill those two if we can sell them out crazy all right that's enough fucking plugging how is this Wall Street stuff Is anyone here invested in that? I'm not. But I have been talking to a few people. Something that you guys probably may not realize is that YouTubers don't make money out of YouTube. Even the ones that make money out of YouTube. YouTubers are like, fuck, anyone with internet money is often fucking raking it in on Bitcoin, on shares i'm not i'm not one of these people uh but i i've seen from this dude from this gamestop shit i have seen some insane fucking numbers in group chats it's wild so uh i've been interested to know if any of you guys are into this stuff um i think it's amazing i really want to be involved i just think it's i'm worried about it being too late you know what i think i would like to buy one GameStop share, but that's like $500 Australian at the moment. And that's as of recording fucking Sunday. It could be, literally could be $700 to $1,000 by the end of the week. Um, I want to buy one just to be involved. Even if I lose the money on it, I just want to be a part of it. This, It's just something special of 
There's such a special air of, yeah, fuck these Wall Street cunts. I want to be involved. Now, I realize that I am about to go on a massive rant of me trashing the 1% and trashing the rich for being cunts while I'm wearing a Gucci sweater, but... Uh, I think that that's kind of funny. So that's where we are. You know, I bought it years ago. All right. Every time I wear this shit, people go, oh, Lewis always talks about this, but he has a Gucci cunt. If you broke down this sweater for the amount of years I've had it, it costs about fucking $2 a week. <laughs> um, I'm a firm believer in buying yourself something nice after an achievement, if you can afford it. Um, and that's, that's why I have a bunch of fucking stupid clothes, but no car. <laughs> Cause, because I've done many amazing things, but nothing so amazing that I can buy a car. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh fuck, I've done something crazy. I could spend $400 on shoes. Yes. And then I'll always remember that that that's the pair of shoes that I got when I sold this many t-shirts. That's a little prize for me. A little bit of motivation to keep me going. Right? Imagine, though, if I fucking just... All right, I did a good tour. Time to buy a Tesla. That's goals. That's fucking goals. Maybe I should have bought GameStop instead of food this week. It seems like a lot of people are doing that. It's like, I'm going to buy GameStop shares instead of food. And you know what? That on paper is absolutely fucking backwards and retarded. But those cunts might be millionaires in two weeks. I'm I, The research that I'm doing on this stuff, I hope you guys enjoyed the big breakdown video that I did. Shout out to Keelan and, and New Edition Jackson for getting that done. That was a really, really intensive writing, researching, and editing uh, monster. That took us two full days to get out, but uh, we did it. Uh, and that was all supported by you guys on Patreon and the people picking up the tickets. So thank you very much. Um, and I suppose it's, it's obviously working, uh, and also the real talks are going crazy which I'm really stoked about. We hit uh, across Reels and TikTok, just the five that we released this week, over half a million. And that doesn't include the other two weeks of Reels that we've done. So I think, you know, it's got to be over a million. I haven't counted up the entire backlog, but between TikTok and Reels, it's got to be over a million, which I am absolutely fucking stoked with. Uh because I've been trying to figure out what to do with Instagram for the longest time because I'm not a fashion influencer cunt. I don't have tits. i got no OnlyFans, so I don't know what to post there. I thought, well, what about short shit? And it is really, really working. TikTok's going crazy, so I'm really happy about that. Um, and thank you to everyone who's putting on their stories and sharing it around. That, mean, that means a lot, guys, because uh, we're putting a lot of work into it. And it's a lot of effort. We have to hire a new person just to fucking keep up with the editing output. But it is it seems to be working. So um, damn, this this GameStop shit, I think that uh, my, my uh, little clarification with my video, I did get one thing very wrong. Um, and I I didn't think this at the time, but I, def I definitely said it. So... I think I was on a roll in a really good take and I just kind of fucked up how I said it. I said in the video that uh, short sellers, people shorting the market as in predicting if something's going to go down, caused the GFC. That's not true. The GFC was caused by banks giving out irresponsible loans, uh, like loans that they knew people couldn't pay back. And then other people noticed that and were like, oh shit, they've been doing this for years. The housing market's going to crash. And then they shorted it and then it did crash. So they didn't cause it, but they did profit off it. So that's kind of what I was getting at was like these people, the, the big bankers fucked over ordinary people by handing out loans that they couldn't pay back. And then other people saw it and capitalized on it, which is not, which didn't cause it, but is also making money out of the misfortune of others, which, but also isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it, I don't know, it's a, very muddy point that I kind of fucked up the details of, but yeah, they, that, that was kind of the only thing that I think I got wrong. Um, that was like a, 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 like a factual thing. Now my prediction at the end of the video is I think looks at the moment, at least to be completely wrong. I said at the end of the video that the way this shit was going, I, I was like, I think this is going to end very unfairly. And I, I, I didn't say it in the video, but I was leaning towards thinking that regulation would come in that would fuck the little guy. That would, you know, something like, oh, you can't congregate on a big forum and organize to buy something. 
you know, something something arbitrary like that that would be able to be applied. Because Wall Street bets, it's not like they're not there to pump one thing and then dump it. They're all just exchanging knowledge, basically. Um I thought that the SEC would come in and be like, make that shit fucking illegal. But they didn't. They came out and they said they gave a warning to Robin, Robin Hood and all these other trading platforms that have restricted the trading of shares. So it looks like, at least from that statement, that the SEC is going to bring in regulation to stop all of these trading platforms from being able to limit the average person's trades, which cost them money because it's fucking crazy if you stop someone's ability to buy and only let them sell obviously the price goes down and if i bought just before that happened you know that could have been thousands hundreds tens of thousands of dollars just down the fucking drain through no fault of my own and nothing to and because of not because i made a bad decision and not because the business fucked up it's literally just because you limited 50% of the definition of supply and demand. You stop demand, which meant supply went up, which meant price went down. Crazy shit. Um, and the SEC came out and fucking warned Robinhood. It's, it's cra this came out, this came out, was publicized after my video, but after Robinhood paused people's ability to buy the stock and then the price went down, the next day, this happened after my video, the next day, Robinhood got a billion dollars from a bunch of head for hedge funds. So like that, I mean, that's all, that's almost fucking undeniable. Like they, they save these hedge funds billions of dollars and then they, and then from there they got $1 billion. Like that's fucking so obviously that's that's like trying to say it without getting sued that just looks like manipulation these fucking wall street cunts these top one percent people are so angry that they got outplayed at the game that they invented like all of this hedge funds is just a bunch of like rich dudes with heaps of money that understand trading in a building discussing trading and planning what to do and then acting accordingly together to make money it's the same shit as Wall Street bets. The only difference is Wall Street bets, there's less money individually, but more people, which adds up to more money than these hedge funds. So it's fucking crazy, man. It's Sunday now. So the American Trading Day opens uh, in many, many hours from now. But I reckon I'm going to stay up just to see what happens. It opens at like 1.30 a.m., I believe, Australian time. I'm going to stay up just to see what happens to the price of GameStop. I, I, I'm I, going to do... I'm not going to buy in. I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to theoretically buy in. I'm going to say in my head, what if I put $1,000 in and I bought two shares of GameStop and then at the end of fucking... When I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to look at how much money I've made or lost. That's, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I would recommend to a lot of people. A lot of people are like getting into share trading and investing and stuff. And I've done a little bit of that. I've never made crazy money because uh, I've kind of realized I'm not smart enough. I think that the real smart play with investing here is buy something and just don't sell it. Buy something that you believe in. Buy something that you understand. Something that you use all the time. I put some money into Afterpay. That was my thing. I was like, oh, that's, I know how that works. I know my entire generation and everyone below it uses that shit every day and they tell other people about how good it is without being prompted. So I understand that. I'll put a bit of money into that and then I'm just going to hold it because I know it's going to fucking work. It, that's how you do it. A lot of people think that they're smart enough to do this buying and selling day one shit. It's like, oh, I'll just, all I got to do is buy it when it's low and sell it when it's high. Yeah, that's fucking, sounds easy, bro. But then you fucking buy it and it goes down 3%. You sell everything, it goes up 25%. You get FOMO, you buy it back, and then it dumps 50%. All of a sudden, you're broke. That's how that, I've seen that happen to so many cunts. You know? You got to have hands of steel, diamond hands. That's one thing that... Uh, I love about the fucking Wall Street bets thing is it's just diamond hands. Do not sell. Don't sell and it'll work. It's fucking, you know what is what I've been thinking like all week? The share market, right? 
Well, I think that what has happened is great and it's amazing. And I think that everyone should take their own finances and their financial education into their own hands. And I think that this like massive awakening that's happened with everyone of like, oh fuck, I can like make money outside of my job. Like a lot of people, you know, like my parents, my mum found out about investing and, and found out that it was possible for her to do without much hassle literally this year. And she called me and she goes, oh, I'm going to try some investing. And I was like, oh, great, mum. And then I gave her the fucking spiel, only invest what you can afford to lose, do your research, blah, blah, blah. And she's having a little bit of a play. She's like in her 50s, right? All of these cunts are like now in their 20s and below. That is truly how you build like insane wealth is by investing in things in your 20s for your and then, and then doing it for the rest of your life. You will make so much more money working in a call center for your entire life and investing it from your 20s. As long as you're not a fucking idiot and you invested in the right things, obviously. But like it's really interesting seeing this like an entire, like two, three generations at once just getting fucking enlightened about trading and getting into trading, right? So that's great. That's the good side of it, of all these people going, oh, let's fuck, I'm going to take my financial fucking shit seriously and take control of it rather than just letting someone else decide what my hourly rate is for the rest of my life, right? That's great. The other thought I keep having, though, is... The share market was never, ever designed for this many people to be using it, right? First, Wall Street was a street, literally. So it was restricted to people within, what, a 40, 50-kilometer radius, maybe? Because obviously public transport wasn't amazing and no one really had cars. So first it was like, Within a 40 or 50 kilometer radius, those were the only people that could trade. And it was built from that. And then even more exclusive, like 40, 50 kilometer radius and if you had enough money. So it was like, what, 10 cunts maybe. That was it. Then it opened up a little bit. Transport got a bit better. More money started coming in. Wall Street got bigger. Maybe that doubled or tripled. But in comparison to the rest of the world... Tiny, tiny amount of people. Then came phones. It's like, all right, a few more people can come in and you can trade for over the phone. You've seen all those fucking clips like Wolf of Wall Street. Cunts trading over the phone with phone calls. Cool. That's more people. Then it was the internet. It's like, that's even more people. And then there's today, which is literally... I, I've spoken to, like, every cunt I know who, at the very least, installed a trading app. They might not have traded yet, but they they did the bare minimum, minimum and they installed a trading app like it was a fucking banking app or like it was Tinder. And it's like, it's it's great. I think it's good, but it's, re it's a really interesting thing of, like, can a share market... That was really just supposed to be for people in the area. Can that be? Can that? Can, does that still work? How it's supposed to when every cunt on the planet is using it? Because that's another thing. Like America, America's Wall Street closed. They're trading closed for the day. GameStop was at this price. It dumped heaps. Right when Robinhood pause the ability to buy the trading day ended meaning nothing can be bought or sold and it dumped like i think it was something crazy like 170 to 100 percent right so it dumped fucking heaps down not 100 percent, obviously 50 percent down maybe 50 70 percent so it went way 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 down i'm thinking of like a hundred dollars is what it went down it went down by like a hundred dollars which is like 50 70 percent of the price Everyone's freaking out. No one can buy. No one can sell. Trading is closed. Then, like four or five hours later, Europe, their trading opens and all these cunts in fucking Germany bring the price way back up 
because they, their trading apps and their trading and their banks and their hedge funds didn't really, I guess, have a fucking horse in the race, so there was no restrictions at all. All these people in Europe bought the fucking stock at the cheap price that previously would have only been available to Americans, blasted it back up, then when their trading closed, all of a sudden the price is way back up here. America starts at the now higher price. Their trading week starts. It's even higher than that. And then so on and so forth. It's like cyclical. It's almost like this 24-hour trading cycle. It's fascinating. I wonder, it makes me think like, that's why I think that especially with COVID and all, and all, all businesses suffering and all that kind of stuff and everyone losing their jobs and businesses closing, but the stock market performing incredibly well, everyone's complaining that it's detached from reality. I think that might just be the nature of too many people getting involved with it. Not not to, not me saying like I don't think this many people should be involved, but like I don't think that the share market was built for this many people to trade. I might be talking out my fucking ass, but like if you think about it, previously there was a small group of people that would trade and that would mostly be reflective on how is the business doing in the real world. If you take that small amount of traders that are buying and selling based on the performance of a business in the real world, if you take that amount of buyers and sellers and you increase it by like an infinite amount, the demand goes so fucking high, it's unbelievable. And purely that just pumps the stock price up into space. Just the, the amount of people fucking buying and selling it, as we're seeing with GameStop, the demand just spikes fucking everything. And that's what makes the stock market become detached from reality and it's becoming, just like anything else, it's worth whatever the fuck you think it's worth. It has nothing to do with the actual performance of GameStop. It did at the start, but now it's just like a fuck you thing. It's worth this because we say it is. It's really interesting. I, I, I truly wonder how this shit's going to go. I've been talking to a couple of people that have been in this like early, like when GameStop was like $10, $20. <laughs> sitting on these giant piles of cash. And um, some of these cunts are convinced that it's going to go to like thousands of dollars. And then and then the hedge funds will go bank. Like some people I know that have made like beyond stupid amounts of money out of this from the position that they started at. And and I'm, I'm looking at what they have now. I'm like, sell that shit. Get rid of it. Sell that shit. Buy a yacht. And they're like, nah. It's going to $4,000. A, a few cunts I've talked to are like, it's going to be $4,000. I'm like, what planet are you living on? And they go, I'm like, it, let's say it goes to $4,000. The hedge fund can't pay for it. They'll go bankrupt. And they go, we know. And that's when the that's when the banks have to step in and the insurance has to step in. And I'm like, well, the insurance just won't pay it. They'll figure out a way to get out of it. Because... Ultimately, right, I love the mission, but the game's rigged against the people. It's the game we're playing. It is rigged against us. And some of these super hardcore people are like, nah, we truly believe that the hedge, it'll go to four or $5,000, then the hedge fund will go broke, and then the insurance will have to pay for it, the insurance company will go broke, and then the government will either have to pay every single person out or financial crisis again and every stock in the world goes down and there's another global financial crisis that is literally where these people are going that's what they think is going to happen and they think they're 100 sure they're going to get their money and i you know what i hope they're right i fucking hope they're right although i, I hope they're 100 percent right because if they're 80 percent right we have a global financial crisis. If all of those things happen, it goes to 4,000, the hedge funds go broke, the insurance companies go broke, and then the banks decide whether or not to pay us, and the government says, nah, fuck it. And then we have the financial crisis. Guess what? They All these traders lose their money, and, and you all lose your houses. So that's the, that's the tightrope that these cunts are playing with, and I, I support it. 
It's a giant game of chicken with your mortgage. With every, not even your mortgage. It's a giant, all these fucking millennials that are like 22 sitting on their fucking ass working for Pizza Hut are willing to play chicken with their parents' mortgage. Because if they if they do this shit and the government doesn't bail them out, global financial crisis, and they're like, fuck yeah, let's go, and I support it. You need that kind of ballsy attitude in life if you want to win or destroy the world and the global economy at large. I love it. And I hope they're 100% right because if they're 80% right, it's over. <laughs> um... I don't know, man. I, I think uh, I'm going to do an imaginary investment. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I would recommend to everyone who's like, I think there are even apps that you can get where you download an app and it's like uh, it's it's like fantasy investing, like fantasy football, where all of the trades are updated real time with actual real markets and then you just get 10,000 imaginary dollars and then you can just buy and sell and trade and practice and see, oh, if I, di- if I actually did $10,000 into this real life stock and fucking bought it and sold it, bought it and sold it, can I do this? I would recommend that. Give it a fucking whirl. I think that it's, I think that taking control of your financial future is super, super important. It's something that, 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 that the more I, the, the deeper I get into entertainment and when I meet business people and when I meet people that, that just have like insane money and came from nothing the more I realize that you don't make money out of what you actually do. No one with money made money out of what they do. All these millionaire rappers, they didn't make that money from rap. All these fucking millionaire comedians, they didn't make it from, from selling tickets. They made their real money from get from taking the money they made from selling tickets, from streams, from Spotify, from selling T-shirts, and they put it into something that made money. And they just kept doing that and kept reinvesting, buying houses, buying shares, investing into businesses, starting shit up, building an app. Like no one actually truly makes money out of what they actually do. Everyone makes money out of everyone with money makes money from their money. That's just how it is. That's how the fucking rich 1%, that's why the rich get richer and the poor stay poorer because the rich cunts have enough money to live on and they have all of this extra money to just throw in the hole and turn into something that makes more money. It's literally just a fucking cloning machine. Once you have enough money, if you have a million dollars in your bank account that you don't need to survive and you just use that million to buy this, build that, invest this, it just becomes a machine that prints indefinitely if you manage it right and you're not a fucking idiot. Uh, And I think that that is possible for people to do, obviously on a much, much smaller scale, but like, you know, you can do a lot more with your money than just putting in a savings account. I think that's what, there's there's a reason why banks want you to put your money in a savings account it's because they invest it. They take your money, invest it for them, and then pay you a sliver. If you're in your 20s, learn that shit, especially because if you've got no mortgage, no kids, no real responsibility, any extra money you have, try and turn it into something. Fuck, I know, I, I know that I'm literally saying this in a Gucci hoodie, but you don't need those shoes. That's what I think. That's what I think is is going to be the, even if this shit does come crashing down or if it goes well, if it does succeed, I, I really hope it does. And I, and I think it will, but no matter what happens, I love this like financial awakening uh, of the masses. I think it's great of all these people going, fuck you. I want a piece. It's great. I think it's sick. Anyway, what else have I been doing here? What else are we doing? Oh, lovely. That's what I need to do. I'm, I'm going to fucking blow your minds, guys. I'm going to give you guys a real great fucking life tip that you should do, right? I did this for the first time ever, and it blew my mind, mate. 
incredible scenes, okay? Before I do that, Manscaped. Speaking of making money, Manscaped, official sponsor of the show. Use code SPEARS20 for 20% off and free shipping your Manscaped 3.0 lawnmower. I shaved my balls this morning. Delightful. Fucking delightful. I look a treat. I look like a snack. Bro, you're, you're lucky that my windows were closed. Or I would have had, I would have had to fight their neighbours off with the Manscaped. And it wouldn't have cut them. It would be a very ineffective weapon because it doesn't hurt when you use it at all. I would try and hurt them with it. They would just get a nice shave. And they go, that was pleasant. Because that's how fucking good the Lawnmower 3.0 is. I've had it for months. I use it every, like, three weeks or so to keep myself looking nice and trim, nice and hygienic. I don't smell like shit. I don't get any stubble. It's incredible. Shave my ass with it. That's how safe it is. I love that shit. Use code SPEARS20. 20% off and free shipping. Valentine's Day is coming up. Fellas, shave your nuts. Ladies, you can use the Manscaped. They don't have a womanscape, but you can use the Manscaped. It shaves pubes, all right? Shave your cunt with this. Manscaped. It's incredible. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. They have all these dot points. I don't know what, to, uh, what, what else am I supposed to say. Do not read. Hosts talk about a time where he hurt his balls while manscaping or a funny manscaping story. I've told them all. I've told them all. I don't have any more, I don't have any more funny stories. All I, in fact, I will have no more funny stories. They, they're gone. I use the manscape now. All I have is like incredibly boring. That worked perfectly. That is exactly what I wanted at the end of this stories. I used it and it went well. What do you want from me, Manscaped? How many embarrassing stories about shaving my dick do you think I have? If I really had enough embarrassing stories about my balls to read every fucking time you come on my show, I wouldn't have a dick by the time you sponsored me. It'd be gone. I would have chopped it off. Every, if, if every time I fucking shaved my balls, I had an embarrassing or funny story, I would have died of blood loss months ago. Six months after I started shaving, I would have stopped. If every time I fucking shaved my balls, I ended up with a story that would make 10,000 cunts listen to a podcast laugh, I would be an idiot to ever shave again. I don't have any more funny stories. I don't know what you want. All I have is, is, is testimony. Buy it, you fucks. It supports the show. It lets me, it lets me say, shave your cunt. <laughs> what else do you want? This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Complete your grooming game with a new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped with the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas. This cologne is a perfect complement to the collection. You can make your chest smell like your taint. What business does that? None. Oh, what's that? Chanel number five? Cool. My balls smell like my ass, which smells like my chest. Beat that. You ever meet up, you ever meet up with a girl for a date? She, she gives you a hug and she goes, oh, you smell nice. What, what smell is that? My fucking asshole. That's what. That's how you get a girl interested. If she smells your chest and goes, that smells nice, and you just look her in the eye and you go, that's what my sphincter smells like, bitch. Bro, you, you, if you say that to a woman, you're about 30 seconds away from the best rim job of your life. And that and that Remy is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS20. 20% off. Free shipping. Support the brands that support the show. I don't know what else to say. I try and make these funny. For you guys. I care about making you cunts laugh. And I just hope that, I, you know, if they, if, if they get angry at that, I don't want them. And Manscaped have been great, so I want them. And that's why we support Manscaped here, because they, they let me say that. Like, all of that, they're like, yeah, great, as long as the code works. <laughs> as long as people use the code, go nuts. And you guys are using the code on your nuts. So thank you. Spears20, Manscaped.com. Right. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of sponsorships, this is not sponsored. Your boy just locked in another deal for Raid. Shadow Legends. I cannot wait. I, for real, cannot... I'm so looking forward to dropping a video with a Raid Shadow Legends ad in it. I can't wait. 
I like I want I need you guys on my team. When I drop that video, it might be a few weeks from now. I'll let you know. But when I drop that video, I want all of all of my Shadow Legend soldiers in the comment section just just like like whatever the fuck the video is about, who cares? I want every comment to be fuck yeah, Raid Shadow Legends is amazing. We love Raid Shadow Legends here. And if you see one comment from anyone, I don't care if it's your own mother trashing me for having a Raid Shadow Legends ad, guess what? Death penalty. No mercy. We take them out as a team. We don't like bad, bad blockers here. Fuck those cunts. I made it all the way through a fucking pandemic. Just to be yelled at, oh, why are you advertising a mobile game? Because they want to pay rent and so do my employees, you cunt. Play the game. You don't want to fucking download it. Don't download it. Who cares? It's an app. I'm not selling you fucking heroin. It's got microtransactions. Yeah, you got a micro penis. Shush. <laughs> it's 9 p.m. And my studio is not a studio. It's a garage. And it is not soundproof. I always wonder what my neighbors think. Would you imagine like 9 p.m.? You just hear me for an hour just screaming. It must sound muffled. But every now and then I must, like I got to come through clearly. And it, and it would it would have been one of those moments just then. It would have been... You've got a micro penis. Like that's what they heard. And and I think that we should all appreciate how fucking hilarious that is. <laughs> I can't wait for the comments. I can't wait for the battle. If I get any backlash, I want you cunts to go wild. <laughs> Alright. Um anyway, on to on to some like real some real life advice. By the way, I'm running low on emails. Podcast at loosebeers.com. If you need any life advice, if you have a question for the show or for me, if you have a funny fuck story, send it through the podcast at loosebeers.com. I'm running low. I don't have any for this episode. Send them through. If you send in a good one, you will get on the show. Um, I uh, I did something last, last week. I didn't get to talk about it last episode because I was yelling about fucking babies at Nobu. Um, gee, this, this podcast has had a, has had a real fucking positive upswing in, in what I discuss since it started. If you go listen to some of the early episodes, I'm yelling about being dead broke, w working in a call center. And then you, you skip to today, today and yes, and last week I'm yelling at about investing, securing your financial future and why you shouldn't take a baby to Nobu. Like what a fucking glow up. Let's be real. Can we be can we be a little bit proud of me and us and what we've achieved? Thank you very much. Um, anyway, I did something that I highly recommend every person, male, female, in between, Caitlyn Jenner, you got to do this, okay? <clears throat> I decided, right, that I just I looked at my wardrobe and I was like, man, all I have is really cool jackets, some a couple of good hoodies, and then anything under that, T-shirts, is all merch. My own merch, Luke's merch. I don't have a single good T-shirt, like a good plain T-shirt. My merch is sick, but it's all I have. And I don't have that many designs, like from my whole career. I've got like five, six, right? So I'm like, I need a good plain t-shirt. I didn't have one. I had one and it was this weird v-neck thing that didn't really suit me and it didn't properly fit my body. I just needed a good fucking plain black t-shirt and a plain white t-shirt. Everyone needs that shit. So I set myself a mission. I went into the city and I decided I'm not leaving until I have the perfect t-shirt. Not a t-shirt. You know, no, it's black and it's medium. I guess that's my size. The perfect black T-shirt for my body shape. I, dude, I highly recommend you do this. And you don't need to spend heaps of money. I ended up getting one for 20 bucks. 
which is actually cheaper than a lot of the shit that I tried on. I went, I, I went to the city and I was like, I am not leaving until I have the perfect fucking T-shirt. I went to literally eight stores. I went black T-shirt shopping for four hours by myself. Don't take a friend. This is a purely you activity. Don't take a mate. Don't take your girlfriend. Don't take mum. This is a selfish shop. All right. I recommend you do this. Go and find the perfect white or black or both t-shirt. I'm a black man. I like my black. I'm a white man. I like to wear black. That was weird phrasing. I went to eight stores, four hours. I went to, if every store I went into, I went to their basic t-shirt. I got the, the basic one. I got the slim fit one. I got the shirt that I think was my size. And I got the size above that and below that. It'll fucking blow your mind what you thought was your size versus what the brand thinks is your size. I would walk into one, and because I'm so fucking tall, in one brand I'm a large, another one I'm an extra large, and another one I'm a medium, right? So I went into, and I, and I did, like, I've tried on the original ones, their slim fit ones, a bunch of different necklines in different stores, and I didn't buy a single shirt because that's the trick. If you go into one, three stores in a row, I thought, oh, this is the one. And then the next one I went to, I found a better one. And the next one I found a better one. I tried on a $50 t-shirt. It was okay. I tried on a $15 t-shirt. It was amazing. I eventually worked my way down to Zara, which is they just rip off all the designer brands and they do it cheap and Asian shop there. So it's slim, right? So I went there and I found the perfect t-shirt. was the final one. Hour four, shop eight. I found the perfect t-shirt. I put it on. I was like, man, this fucking fits exactly how I want. Tried them all on. I tried on, literally, I counted 21 t-shirts. And I found the perfect black t-shirt. And now, I will never, ever in my life have to find a t-shirt that fits me. I look incredible. You want to see me in it? Last week. Check out last week's podcast. I've never looked better in a t-shirt. Look incredible. Evidence for that? I went out, had a bit of had a very important meeting with Luke Kidgel. We went out, we had we had a fucking important business meeting about things coming up that shall go unannounced until they are announced. Keep your nose out of my business. But it's very exciting. And it's going to happen very soon. And I wish I could tell you, but I can't because I've got to tell you this, which is even more important. I go there, I'm wearing my nice T-shirt, nothing else. Talk to this guy who, who I've known for a couple of years now, I think. He looks at me and immediately, upon seeing me in the T-shirt, immediately goes, have you been working out? Bam! My fucking fitness goal achieved. The organic have you been working out from someone that doesn't know me very well? Oh, incredible. That's when you know that one, the fitness is paying off, and two, you're wearing a well-fitted T-shirt. Worth the four hours. You just wait. And now what I did was I wore the, I bought the T-shirt. I mean, you look like a bit of an insane cunt walking up to the change rooms with four of the same t-shirt in the same color in different sizes and going, I want to try them all on. They go, yeah, okay. You get past that, no worries. Because once you fucking get out of that fitting room and you find the perfect t-shirt for you, it's over. And now what I did was I bought one. I went home, showed my girl. She goes, that's the fucking one. I said, I know. Bought six online. Three black, three white. I'll never need another T-shirt again until those die on me. And then I'll know exactly what to get. That's a lifelong fucking benefit I've made for myself. And I'll never have to do it again. And I really recommend it. I put on the good T-shirt, took it off. I put on the black, plain black T-shirt I used to wear. I look like a fucking idiot. And I bet you do too. Your T-shirt doesn't fit. Oh, it's a medium's probably my large. Shut up. Doesn't fit you. Go out and get a plain black shirt and try it on. Same goes for jeans. I did it with jeans. My whole fucking life, I was wearing the wrong pair of jeans. 
I went, I did one massive jean shop. I figured out exactly my waistline, exactly my length, and exactly my brand and style in that brand. Now, that was about five years ago. Never had to buy jeans ever again. Never had to try them on. I just get the pair that I know works for me. However, tragedy has struck. When I went to buy some new jeans, because I wore my way through the, the plain black pair, I noticed they discontinued the pair of jeans that I usually buy. And this, these jeans, they're the only ones left. They were the final pair. They don't make them anymore. So I'm going to have to do another one. But that's pretty good. Five years later, I have to do another fucking jeans try on. That's next on my list. Come see me live. That's jeans money. I'm on it. I'm there. I've made it. <laughs> but for real, it's fun. I, dude, I love a bit of a fucking solo shop. Even a solo browse. Just buy yourself. Leave the phone at home. It's great. That's another thing I'm going to try and do this year is just use the phone less. I use it so much. I used it all Saturday. All Saturday. Like the whole day. Literally the entire... I didn't put it down. And I, was, I wasn't working. I wasn't fucking doing anything important. I was just scrolling, watching TikTok, looking at shares, reading Twitter, jumping on Reddit, researching this, reading this Wikipedia. Fucking bullshit. Filling my mind with rubbish. I'm sure there's a few people that do this as well. Just fucking scrolling and not thinking and just mushing my fucking brain. I woke up the next day after lying in bed. You know, I use it from the, from the minute I wake up until I went to bed and then I lie in bed for like two, three hours, fucking scrolling, not being able to sleep. I woke up the next morning, my eyes were fucked. They felt painful. I turned the phone off for the whole day. I feel incredible. Phone off. It's happening. I moved my fucking charger from my bedroom into another room. I don't, I'm not going to look at it anymore. I used to do that and it, and it was so much better. I slept so much better. And then I stopped fucking doing it. And then I suffered. I recommend you cunts do that too. It's great. This is, this is really the episode of this is what you should do with your life. Listen to me and do as I say. Um, oh, man, I also had to take the cat to the fucking vet. I'm not going to have time to tell, to tell this one. I'll have to save this for next episode, but fuck, man. Cat vet, saving that for next episode. That is, the cat is, it's got to go. It has to go. I've, I've, it, it pissed me off so much, I wrote and filmed an entire real talk about the fucking cat, and that's coming. <laughs> um, been gigging a lot recently, which has been which has been amazing. I'm, fuck, I, I really missed stand up comedy. It's so good that it's back. I can't wait for these shows, man. I, I'm really really looking forward to uh, just just performing for you guys and and being reminded that you exist. Like no wonder fucking YouTubers get sad all the time. They sit in their fucking bedrooms, they upload, and all they see is like numbers and comments, and it means it, like it's nice. It's not real though. Not tangible. I didn't realize how fucking blessed I was to be able to meet you guys and hear your laughter and feedback and and see the impact I have when I tell a joke. Doing it, being stuck at home for an entire year, making videos and just seeing likes and shares and going, oh, I think I'm doing a good job. This comment says it was funny, so I guess it was. Didn't realize how fucking blessed I was, so I can't wait to get back out there, Melbourne. Tickets are on sale on Tuesday. Um... Please do buy, if you're unsure of what date, and you can go to any of the weekends, that first Saturday show has less than 50 seats left. If we can sell that out this week, that'll be a big flex for the Comedy Festival. Because if you don't know, the Comedy Festival, there's hardly any interstate guests at all. I think none of the other boys are coming down uh, that I know of. Uh, I've spoken to Neil and Frenchie. I believe they're not coming down. I don't know for sure, but... I don't think uh, any other like bigger interstate acts are coming down either from like the mainstream, like the boomer comics. None of them are coming down. There's no international acts. It's mostly just people who live in Melbourne. So if I, and, and the festival's never really 
given me anything, never fucking let me in, never, always like it, to the point of like actively ignored me and, and our entire fucking movement and our entire generation, Luke as well, and all the other boys who were doing it with an online audience. The festival has like done their best to ignore us. If we can come out, come out of the gates like day one of tickets going on sale, selling out shows, that'll be the fucking biggest shit ever. If we can sell out more shows than their big acts in the first week, it's going to make some waves. And I love a fucking rocky boat. <laughs> um, thank you very much for listening, guys. If you want more podcasts, I'm going to continue on uh, on the Patreon exclusive Spearhead Sunday supplement episode that'll uh, continue on from here. If you want to check it out, that should be up uh, very shortly on Patreon and you get access to the Discord as well and uh, you get a, a really cool Spearhead Sundays mug that I'm drinking out of as well. That makes your coffee taste better um, because it's magic. Uh, grab your tickets. Support me on Patreon if, you, if you're outside of Melbourne or if you're inside of Melbourne, if you want tickets and you've got heaps of cash you want to give me some instead of putting it in GameStop, I would uh, love to put it in my pocket. So thank you very much um, for supporting what I do, guys. I cannot wait for these shows. I am in peak form. I thought that – I honestly thought my stand-up was going to come out of quarantine and rough, but uh, I actually for real think I'm, I'm, I'm better now than I was before. I don't know why. I think I think maybe it's because I was it was like a writing retreat, I suppose, like a, it forced me to just write for an entire year. Um all my stuff is like killer. I think for whatever reason, maybe it's because I missed it, maybe because I didn't appreciate what I had or or I I'm just re-remembering how fun and amazing it is to be on stage and perform whatever it is. I am like in 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 an in another form my stand up and I cannot wait to show you what I've been working on because it is some uh, it's some fucking flashy shit and it's gonna cause some waves all right so I'll see you at the uh, the shows thank you for listening I'll talk to you next Sunday and I'll uh, or I'll continue on the Patreon episode thank you very much I'm Lewis Spears have a shit one. <laughs>